excuse me if I don't speak uh, your language, so I will um, revert to English. Uh, thank you for the invitation, and uh, good morning to everybody. That's uh, some uh, of our daily experience. Unfortunately, all this is man-made. We are in the age of the Anthropocene because uh, human behaviors are the main factor impacting human life uh, and every life form. So, it's urgent, uh, it's important, uh, is dramatically relevant uh, that uh, we learn uh, how to see, think, and act uh, in a systemically interdisciplinary, intersectoral, and intercultural way. Albert Einstein said it in an eloquent way. Even if we will in, we cannot solve the problem with the same level of thinking, with the same vision, with the same narrative that create the problems. And education is among the variables that play a very important role in the social construction of reality. And uh, it's clear, dramatically evident, that we need a, a paradigm change uh, in education, not only in education, <clears throat> in order to enable people to deal effectively with the mounting challenge facing us. Because uh, most of them uh, we created. So to have uh, sustainable governance, uh, we uh, have to uh, really deal effectively how knowledge, science are produced and disseminated. I don't speak uh, Lithuanian, but uh, uh, Yuri translated a little bit of what uh, the president of the academy and uh, your president, uh, very impressed, I think uh, we are in agreement. And so this retooling uh, has to start uh, with our frame of reference. We need to create a new paradigm on education, enabling uh, education to serve uh, the people's needs uh, and to have relevance for public service, social responsibility, and sustainable governance. My friend and colleague, uh, Yuri Elderbeck, uh, last night gave me a publication in English uh, of your academy. And I was amazed uh, to see that years ago you expressed uh, in your publication similar concept. So uh, knowledge, science, and education are the main narrative uh, to prepare a new generation to play an active uh, and constructed part of society. Knowledge, science, education are very significant tools to empower people, but also to carry values, building blocks of society. If this is so, also the opposite is so. <laughs> that unfortunately, to teach obsolete knowledge is a form of disempowerment is a sort of fake news, of fake knowledge. And now we have another challenge that can be also a great opportunity. The fourth industrial revolution. The fourth industrial revolution uh, uh, is being driven by a lot more powerful technology and 
among those that uh, there are some uh, that are really changing or blurring the boundary, what is uh, <clears throat> real and what is virtual reality. Uh, it's actually blurring also the physical, di digital, biological sphere, and uh, in other words, it uh, will affect the fourth revolution uh, everything, the bio, the psycho, the social dimension. So basically everything. Uh, they will transform uh, and already doing the way we live, uh, we work, uh, and also relate to each other. The president was talking about the Google. Uh, well, think about social media, how much they have changed. Uh, but actually, it would change what it means to be human. So, we really cannot afford to mismanage this fourth industrial revolution because we did largely mismanage the one in the past. For example, dealing with the insufficient frame of reference, the mechanistic, reductionistic frame of reference doesn't work well. Actually, it makes us uh, see things uh, that uh, should have been wonderful, uh, and they were boomerang fact. Just an example, the promise of DDT, eliminating uh, malaria, eliminating the uh, past, uh, and uh, then uh, we find uh, that they destroy ecosystem, uh, penetrate the waterways, the life chain. So we end up uh, with DDT, in uh, mother's milk uh, and uh, penguin livers. Uh, the revolution in agriculture with artificial fertilizer, we were all happy. And then we saw how many boomerang effect that produce. Limited vision, not evil, just a limited vision. So we have uh, really the need to have a sustainable education. With what I mean with that, education based on reality, that is based on the people, that is scientifically well-grounded, and also well-grounded how people learn and develop their potentialities. I'll speak more about. We know that the people cannot learn just by lecturing to them, like I'm doing now, for example, and that they need to be engaged actively to develop their potentiality. So uh, we need in society at large a compass, uh, to offer a compass uh, to navigate uh, the rippling wave of change, uh, to learn uh, how to relate uh, in a sustainable way, first of all, to learn how to relate to ourselves and then to others and to the world. Also, because if I don't learn to deal with myself, how am I going to deal effectively with others and to live in things? Uh, one of my professors, Carl Rogers, uh, said that uh, at the base of anything that the uh, scientists uh, undertake uh, is first, first of all an ethical and moral value judgment uh, that he makes. I fully agree with that. As well uh, as John Dewey, the philosopher and educator. He says the problem with schools that there are too many teachers and to few facilitators of learning. One thing is teaching, one thing is promote the development of the learning capacity, much more effective. So, in my opinion, some of the variables that we'll need to foster a more humane and sustainable future for social and natural capital is we need more awareness. We need more empathy. Your president, I was impressed by Yuri 
grateful for your translation. I catch uh, the thing. I was very impressed uh, uh, that when she said, we need uh, to talk more to each other, uh, if I understood. Uh, but uh, we need also to listen and understand that with empathy each other, where people are coming from, with different value, with different needs, uh, expectation. And uh, we need the, the capacity, before we respect environment, uh, we need to respect uh, the living organism uh, with which we're going to spend every hour of our life, ourselves. And if I can respect myself and the different part of myself, then it's easier to respect also others, others also different from me. And then it's more easy to feel and feel empathy also for other living things. I can walk in a wood and not just think, wow, how much money I can do felling this tree and making a usable uh, construction uh, material. I can appreciate to be part uh, of the planet uh, and not just uh, to cut down uh, and count uh, the profit. Because that is nothing going to enrich me in the long run. It's making me and everybody else more poor. Because rich or poor, we all breathe the same air. We still eat food, and the quality of relationship is for rich and poor this common interest. I, I used to live and teach in California, and I'm in Santa Monica. Me and my wife, every year, we are guests of very good friends, and they are very affluent. One will say they are very rich. They are very good people and donate a lot of their profits uh, to charities and good cause. But anyhow, uh, my friend uh, is the, my same age, 73, and uh, is much, looks much younger than me and is much uh, in good shape, athletic. As he has a beautiful swimming pool. Every morning at 7, uh, he wakes up, uh, choof, uh, choo, 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 choo. Then uh, the last three years, uh, he's not been well. And uh, his uh, uh, immune system has been down. He's very rich. He has excellent insurance. For three years, he's been going around a different expert, also in Europe. Nobody could help to solve the problem. Until he met, uh, he went uh, to a doctor that asked him uh, this question. What you eat, uh, you know, in a week? Uh, what you eat? And uh, so fish say so, uh, in a month well the guy likes fish i do too and uh, it's rich uh, so he can go to the best uh, fish restaurant sometimes they invite us uh, i assure you it's delicious um, but the guy said now for a month uh, you do not eat any fish come back and we do some examination problem solved my friend was eating too much fish that, unfortunately, nowadays contains a lot of poison. And it's not fault of the fish. By the way, it contains also microparticle plastic. So we've been able to really do what, if I like science fiction, if 30 years ago I read a science fiction uh, a novel that says that there is this planet uh, where people are bent uh, with enthusiasm uh, to poison their air, to poison their earth, uh, to poison their oceans, as an exaggeration. So uh, we really need uh, more capacity to respect oneself, uh, others, and the world. And also more responsibility. But I'm not talking a more I'm guilty, more to see that we are able to respond. It doesn't need to be like this if we decide that 
we want to respond. But to respond effectively, we need to see holistically the interconnected things, and also to see uh, across a different disciplines uh, that are very important, but cannot be only my discipline, because the world is not uh, made in square. We need uh, to accumulate our knowledge. Uh, and also, we need to see how in different sectors, operating one uh, will uh, also affect uh, another or many other. So, as I said, uh, education is really a building block of what uh, the sociology of knowledge uh, call the social construction reality, basically what we call reality, uh, that is changing uh, continuously and is different around uh, different culture. Uh, education is at the same time a process and a product. It's not just a diploma that I hang around the wall and the credentiality. It's really a continuous process and cannot stop in the whole life, um, 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 so also continuing education. Uh, and uh, we know from research uh, the effective education promotes uh, what is make us human, creativity, resilience, health and prosperity, but unfortunately, dysfunctional education does the opposite. Uh, really, we pay a big toll when it's not uh, effective. We have a lot of research. I know that many of you are uh, teachers, educators. Uh, well, we have uh, uh, a lot of research. Uh, and uh, what I'm talking about, uh, cumulatively, 17 million uh, of people in different countries uh, have been uh, researched, and we have data. So what is called student-centered uh, or person-centered education apply more scientifically validated knowledge than the traditional education, and the principle of student-centered education uh, pedagogy is congruent uh, with the, the latest knowledge uh, we have uh, from psychology, sociology, anthropology, and a lot also from the neuroscience in the last 30 years. Student-centered education is more effective uh, than traditional professor-centered uh, teaching uh, and uh, teaching uh, just based uh, on content. And also, is more effective uh, also in the traditional uh, dry, so to speak, uh, topics uh, like uh, hard sciences, computer-assisted learning, hybrid coursing, a hybrid course, uh, half uh, on the online and a half uh, person to person, and e-learning. And of course, uh, we need to educate people not only in schools, uh, but in daily life, uh, where people live and work. Um, we have uh, <coughs> the need uh, of uh, promoting an effective and sustainable social, ecological, and person-centered education. And this uh, can be not the only one, of course, uh, but an important variable for the creation of more effective, efficient, uh, more human, and sustainable process and products. This is uh, some uh, of the present, uh, and some uh, is uh, what uh, I suggest. Uh, when I say I suggest, is that uh, because I'm saying it now. <laughs> there is a vast literature you can go online and find a vast amount of publication. So I don't just mention, you can read it. And uh, let me underline, in traditional education, uh, we have uh, used an outdated model of society models, uh, uh, where all the power is in the expert, uh, and uh, very little power is uh, in the learner. That doesn't work. Doesn't work even uh, in uh, politics. It's the different 
What I'm talking here is about a democratic education that foster active citizenship and encourage empowering is a wonderful word. It's very sexy nowadays to say empowering. But empowering is fostering responsibility. <clears throat> Carl Rogers, uh, that is uh, one of the fathers of humanistic psychology and also of personal and student-centered education, uh, has uh, done a, a vast amount of research. Uh, the latest research uh, is uh, like uh, 300 uh, uh, research uh, with meta-analysis that we published last year. <clears throat> And uh, he extrapolated three basic uh, aspects uh, that work in all the helping relationship and uh, uh, being a, a promoter of learning or a teacher is a helping relationship. Uh, I suppose that we all agree with that. And there are three that uh, uh, underline the effective uh, facilitator of learning or teacher. By the way, we have, uh, even in Italy, I'm from Italy, or in the States, in 133 countries, we have uh, a research uh, because uh, we train teachers uh, to become uh, a promoter of learning, and so we know that uh, it's really effective. Uh, also to give more satisfaction uh, to teaching uh, that today has become, in many cases, uh, a frustrating and difficult job, uh, more than that, because the status uh, in many countries has been down. Uh, students come uh, s even uh, with arms in school, so much uh, that in some countries there is metal detector to enter their school, so you leave your uh, revolver out of the classroom. Uh, so, respect, empathic understanding, and out Authenticity congruent, what it meant uh, technically is the capacity for deep contact. No matter what in, I have uh, to, in relationship, profound uh, contact uh, with people, but also profound contact uh, with the living being. Uh, <clears throat> so, very quickly, the research of Carl Rogers and his group uh, on uh, not on pathology, but on the opposite, the people, exceptionally well-functioning people, uh, extrapolated common denominators. The people that are very good, uh, exceptional, are, have these uh, traits in common. They are self-aware, integrated, in touch with themselves. They are capable of being deep, authentic, uh, trusting, not trusting everything and everybody, but uh, basically trusting, creative, <clears throat> good capacity to be part of a group uh, of affiliation, we say in psychology, good uh, communicator, also with their emotion, balance, and also realistic. They have ideals, uh, but they have their feet on the ground. They are also <clears throat> have a good uh, psychological health, uh, maturity. Maturity, what we mean uh, in psychology, ba basically, that uh, you are, as a mature person, you choose uh, your priority. And you don't lament uh, the fact uh, that if you live uh, in Rome, uh, you cannot live uh, in Berkeley anymore. <laughs> you have to choose, uh, you cannot have both. Uh, but you are happy with your choice eh, if you made it uh, 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 willingly. A and the kid uh, is instead uh, the mature person, the person like uh, a little kid uh, that has uh, so many toys, wants to grab them all and then cry because he has uh, 10 in his arms uh, and one uh, <laughs> is left out. Very realistic. Uh, we adults uh, nowadays, uh, we are always uh, unhappy, and we have uh, so many things, uh, but we don't have more. Totally unrealistic and immature. <clears throat> so, another important trait, open to experience. If I'm open to experience, I can learn. Uh, instead of being uh, very rigid uh, 
and defense stance uh, <clears throat> of a person feeling under threat. Unless uh, nowadays in Italy and uh, in Europe, and not only Europe, but look uh, at the United States, fear and rigidity and feeling a paranoid about people different than me are taking hold and we're going to pay and pay a, a big toll for everybody to have that stance. And more than everything, they are able to learn from experience, which is basically also science. What is science if not the history of the human race to learn from experience and use creativity and think out of the box. As a personality, they are mature, fluid, they're not rigid, and they're not fundamentalist. Uh, they have uh, resilience and uh, a lot of adaptability. They trust themselves, uh, which is the opposite of being narcissistic. You know? This is a, an age where, you know, we are, so to speak, uh, continuously shooting uh, snapshot of ourselves, uh, the selfies, that exactly the opposite uh, of uh, trust of oneself. If you trust yourself, you are not so frantic uh, demonstrating uh, that you exist. They trust uh, your, our organism. They trust uh, their intuition because we are not uh, just rational. Uh, and their feelings and value. Somebody, I think, uh, said that uh, this is the age, instead of rationality, of emotionality. I think uh, psychological health uh, is a balance uh, of rationality, of uh, you know, critical thinking, but also owing to the heart uh, of emotion. It needs to be balanced. Uh, it's like two arms or two legs. <clears throat> Uh, they derive uh, a trust uh, in themselves, uh, but also a sense of direction, you know, goal, clear value. They have a purpose, and often they have a significant uh, capacity for leadership. Uh, a personal education purpose, uh, so, is uh, to protect and promote uh, the innate uh, creative uh, capacity of learning from our experience uh, to promote wholeness and integration in the individual. And uh, this is done uh, focusing on the student personal growth and development. Uh, <clears throat> let me give you an example, because uh, we really aim in person-centered education to promote the uh, development uh, or create a, a competent members of society able to contribute effectively to the life of their community. Nowadays, uh, you know, in the recent months, uh, I've been asked by a small college in coaching Kerala, India. <laughs> so there is this Italian that went in total one week to start the process. And the process in person-centered education, this is a private college, is that I had a, a whole day of preparation of the agreement uh, of the condition that everybody, including the owners and the director, would participate at the process. And everybody goes to the whole process. So if the top management is not in agreement, uh, you wouldn't uh, have uh, any chance. And so then uh, I stay there a week, uh, and uh, every month I spend the day with an hour with the top management, uh, with the management, uh, the professor, the students, uh, but also people that work uh, in the canteen, uh, the clean, uh, the uh, premises, and all that. Anyhow, the deal is that everybody is involved in a project that design and carry out with my help, my support, I don't design it, to grow as a person and as a student or professor 
or owner of the university. Uh, thanks to them, because it is a metaphor, it's a narrative, I hear the professor or the top management saying, I'm a different man or I'm a different woman. Why? I spend more time talking to my wife. I spend three hours a week doing voluntary work in my community. I listen more to my students. I let them decide the part of the curriculum. In the students, uh, you hear the same thing, but uh, of course, in the beginning, I heard a lot of this. I didn't believe at all <laughs> about this project. It sounded a little silly to me, but now I believe it because uh, I see how it's changing my life. So, uh, I think uh, we don't need uh, just uh, person-centered, uh, but uh, we need to engage uh, people in a narrative uh, where they regain trust in themselves uh, and to grow as a person, as professional, as a citizen. Anyhow, see how the role of the teacher in student or person-centered education change. It's a professional commitment to learning and to be effective. Democratic value based education. Uh, this is very important, I think. Able to share her or his passion about learning. I must say, I enjoyed uh, being a student uh, and I've been lucky to have a very good uh, professor, not only her largest, but uh, I think uh, learning is a passion and I've learned it more <laughs> being a professor, being a, a facilitator of learning than when I was in school myself. So learning is really something like uh, mm, eating a, a juicy pear, a juicy peach that is uh, sapid. It's really being in passion, a passion to learn and to grow. It's to, also to be in touch with the oneself, uh, the students, the member of the community and the world, uh, and wanting and having the needed skill and attitudes to be a facilitator of learning, an effective mentor, promoting student creativity, autonomy, and so also responsibility, uh, the, helping people, the students, uh, to develop the personal and social skills. The role of the student is uh, to take responsibility for her or his own uh, development, uh, is uh, to develop an interest uh, in the development of social, personal, and problem-solving skill, uh, learning to learn, uh, learning from mistake. We always uh, look at mistake uh, and are afraid, so we blame others. It's not my fault, uh, somebody else's fault or hiding mistakes. That's really crazy, because learning from mistakes eh, is wisdom. And so, willing to contribute uh, to a tolerant uh, school ethos, and able to learn how to relate to oneself, others, with respect, empathy, and congruence. Ending up, uh, person-centered, student-centered, centered, centered is also an effective form of peace education for what I just said, uh, learning to relate to oneself, uh, as listening to myself, uh, the different part of myself, the other people, the other part of soci society. And uh, <coughs> we need to be effective, protecting, and promoting a human and environmental capital. Think globally and act locally, but in an effective way. And so we need to offer people knowledge, skills, and competence uh, to operate uh, intersectorial, interdisciplinary level, at all the level, especially at the social, cultural, environmental, economical, psychological, and spiritual. Also, the spirit uh, is uh, an important part of our self. I'm a part, uh, and this is the end, 
uh, of uh, the World Academy of Art and Science, uh, like my colleague Yuri is, uh, and also the World University Consortium. We have a lot of uh, free journal, on scientific journal in English uh, that uh, anybody in you can share for free. And also we have uh, newsletters and also e-learning courses. Uh, if you go to that uh, uh, website that I now will uh, promote, uh, I will be the, you see the next slides, uh, you can have everything for free. This is a different consortium of university. It's including the university, but also wants to include uh, the village in Africa without electricity that wants to be connected, uh, and we want to learn from them as well. So a consortium of all the stakeholders, because uh, this moment of crisis, uh, either we do it uh, all together or we're not going to do it. So the uniting uh, all the forces uh, and all the willing uh, stakeholder is so important. And uh, thank you very much uh, for your patience. Uh, and these are the website uh, where you can get uh, free publication uh, online uh, in English. Thank you.